This is a look at Queen's 15 studio albums. Um, I was going to make um, a poll and kind of rate them from 15 up to number 1, but I found that that was a little bit unfair, and plus the fact that it would create a lot of controversy. Um, okay, some Queen albums are definitely better than others, but they all have their merits. Um, because they span over 20 years. Uh, so instead, I'm just going to go from A to B, and that is the first Queen album to the very final Queen album. Okay, so I'm going to start with Queen's uh, debut. Um, this is from 1973. Um, Queen had been around oh, since the late 60s, but uh, they were actually quite slow getting their um, debut album off the ground. Um, a lot of it was to do with record uh, company Jiggery Pokery. Um, but they were playing a lot of live venues around the UK. Um, sometimes it's unfair to say that they copied Led Zeppelin. Um, I will say that even though the early years um, it's more or less hard rock or heavy rock. Um, I don't think that Queen ever sounded anything like Led Zeppelin um, uh, and anybody will say that uh, the, the critics kind of said oh you're trying to copy Zeppelin because Zeppelin were kind of so um, lauded and highly acclaimed that anybody with a riff and a high voice was going to be copying Zeppelin uh, that's not true Queen sound nothing like Zeppelin um, it's the first album um, and by the way, I have all these albums on vinyl, but it's just easier to film the compact discs. Um, so yeah, this one, um, it's not bad. You know, Keep Yourself Alive is a good single. Um, got Great King Rat, My Fairy King, Liar. That's one of the um, heavier songs on the album. A lot of good guitar on that from Brian May. Um, uh, Modern Times Rock and Roll, again straight ahead, it's almost like punk. Um, well, uh, this album, it's it's entertaining, um, all the ideas are here, the blueprint for Queen, the vocals, the multi-layered guitars, um, all those studio innovations are here. Um, uh, Jesus, uh, that would probably be my least favourite track on the album, it's just a little bit weak, um, yeah. 70s of Rye, that's actually the instrumental and it's actually quite short so it's kind of a teaser to what was to come. Mm, so yeah, um, like I said it's a band just finding their feet and it's their uh, debut and you know it's still a good debut by any uh, means and uh, quite enjoyable um, but you know it's not the best Queen album. <laughs> Next is Queen 2. Uh, Queen 2 um, is a, a pretty big leap on from the first album. Um, it's much more accomplished. Um, it's an amazing album really um, in the fact that in the time it was recorded to the time it was um, released it's it's also um, Queen's I suppose last very very heavy album. You know the rock was kind of disappearing by the time Sheer Heart Attack came along with a lot more experimental and poppy music. But um, Queen 2, it kind of works as a suite. Um, it influenced an awful lot, uh, amount of people in its time. A lot of American rock bands were in awe of Queen 2. Um, Ford of the Sun is a fantastic track with um, Beach Boy style harmonies. You've got uh, White Queen, Gentle Little Ballad. And that even sounded better live. Um, someday, one day, um, it's a bit kind of like almost like Jerry Rafferty, you know, kind of jangly, folky rock. Um, Ogre Battle, that's a masterpiece. Um, huge riffs on that. Um, Fairy Fellows Master Stroke, that's a little quirky song, incredibly. 
uh, quirky and there's a lot of um, tricks going on in that song, it's amazing. Um, Nevermore, it's just a piano ballad, um, the kind of thing that Mercury became famous for later on. Uh, March of the Black Queen is a big long track by Mercury and um, it's got uh, different types of signature changes and Hellfire and Brimstone going on here. And then Funny How Love Is, it's almost like kind of Phil Spector uh, throwback. Um, could be from before the album sessions, I'm not 100% on that. Um, yeah, and then Seven Seas of Rye, the uh, single, which is um, a big blast of pomp. And uh, yeah, so Queen 2 is very enjoyable. Um, they definitely had a, a good focus on this and uh, nothing was left to chance. This album has got, really has no filler. Um, it's a band finding its way to create um, great albums. Album number three um, is Sheer Heart Attack. Uh, this is probably where it all starts changing. Uh, it's a great album. Um, there's something in here for everybody. Um, rock, pop. There's even a bit of ragtime on it. Um, it's a super album. Um, and uh, all the members contribute. Uh, Brighton Rock is the uh, cornerstone of the album, with uh, Brian May showing off his um, Echoplex uh, multi track guitar. Um, Killer Queen, a Mercury composition. Um, I think he got an Ivor novella for that. Um, incredible little single. Then you've got a kind of a suite of Tenement Funds to Flick of the Wrist to Lily of the Valley and then Brian May's masterful clanking Now I'm Here um, which is almost kind of status quo territory um, but very good. In Lap of the Gods, Don't Call Crazy. These are all short songs on the second side. Miss Fire is a kind of an acoustic uh, Deacon track. Um, bring back that Leroy Brown is one of the highlights of the album, and um, that's pure, you know, 1920s um, Americana. Yeah, it's just great. Um, she makes me. It's kind of a slow acoustic um, ballad by me, and in the lap of the gods revisited again a Mercury track, which is a bit like Slade, I suppose. Yeah, it's a Kind of almost glam great uh, great track this album fits together very well i think may was actually quite ill at the time it was um, being recorded uh, and it stood to the test of time and uh yeah it's a it's a it's a, a cracker a night at the opera um this is probably the band's um creative peak um this one has got zero filler on it um it's a classic um you know you could go and say that they never topped it um they, they didn't really need to top it because by the time this came out they were um pretty big and this is from 1975 um dead and two legs is a, a mercury snipe at um one of their ex-managers who was coining it while the band were starving Amazing on a Sunday afternoon. It kind of goes into Sergeant Pepper's territory. I'm in love with my car is a Roger Taylor track. Um, and he sings vocals on that and it's great. You're my best friend is a, a Deacon penned um, Motown flavoured song. 39. Kind of um, skiffle style acoustic ballad. Great. Sweet Lady. Uh, that's kind of almost Rolling Stones riff territory. And you got to see Side Rendezvous which is Edwardian. Um, very funny. Pro Prophet Song is a masterpiece and one of their best songs. It's heavyweight. Um, it's definitely up there with some of Zeppelin's work. It's a bit underrated, I guess. You know, there's a, an amazing um, call response vocal section in it as well, um, where Mercury does all the backing vocals and the, that's mind blowing. Um, all done on tape, analog. Um, Love of My Life is um, a beautiful ballad, love song, really heartfelt. Good Company is another kind of um, 
a good old days style song you know pure comedy um bohemian rhapsody i mean there's nothing to be said about that except um well I, in my mind i would say like how could somebody write a song like that <laughs> how, how could you you know how could you write it and uh yeah that winds up and nice the opera um which is it, it's their high point uh creatively um you know they've done good things since but and like the opera is an essential Queen album and it is a hundred percent focused by the band and that's why it works so well and it is a masterpiece so uh, that brings us to a day at the races um, you know with the um, similar cover it could be classed as a follow-up to um, a night at the opera uh, but in its own right it's still a very good album um, one of my favorites um I really like this album a lot. Um it has Tire Murder Down on it, which is a big fat boogie. And then you've got the gentle You Take My Bread Away, which is a beautiful little Mercury ballad. Long away is kind of a bit Eagles territory maybe, and then you have the incredible Millionaire Waltz. Uh, only Mercury could write a song like that. Um <laughs> it's incredible it's it's got great production great arrangements brian may has got a guitar orchestra on that um i don't know how he did all that uh, it's incredible yeah so it's one of the highlights on the album you and i um it's actually a deacon kind of rock pop song interesting yeah very good it, it kind of leads to news of the world territory i guess uh mercury has kind of an aggressive vocal on it and then somebody to love that's just a masterpiece absolute masterpiece of gospel soul um again how could you write a song like that and it's got everything on it including the kitchen sink white man um big heavy guitar song about the indians the american indians um when they were getting um shot at and put off the land by the white man over the years in the Wild West, um, it's probably a subject on the album that's slightly ill-suited to Queen at the time. I'm not sure. Um, it's kind of um, it's it's a little unconvincing. I don't know. A lot of people probably go mad over that, but um, Queen have never been political, and um, it's you know it's okay, but it's it's not my favorite song on this album. Good old fashioned lover boy again, 1920s style um song that was a single written by mercury and um concise to the point and really really nice i suppose yeah, it's kind of a bit beetly kind of like you know peppers kind of style um drowse is a roger taylor track and that's fantastic he sings it himself and it's got this great kind of six eight rolling rhythm in it and it's one of my favorite queen songs and then it brings us to uh tio toriate uh let us cling together which is um Queen ballad um, song um, partly in Japanese um, it was kind of um, a kind of a what will I say a song to their Japanese fan base which was absolutely huge at the time so yeah it's a great track and uh, brings um, a day to race uh, to a close and again one of my favorite Queen albums and it's really good after the pomp of um, the first four or five years and um, after using up every channel on every microphone in the studio <laughs> um, Queen strip it back a bit and they bring us news of the world in 1977 um, it's a fine album um, of course you know it's got um, the opener we will rock you which became a huge 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 anthem and it's just got vocals and clapping on it stamping and just Brian May's great guitar solo at the end then we are the champions of course which is another um, stadium blaster then we've got Cher Heart Attack which is a very very fast um, Roger Taylor song which blasts out at about 100 miles an hour um, obviously it was rejected from Cher Heart Attack at the time and held over and used on News of the World then you've got um, pretty ballads like All Dead All Dead um, and Spread Your Wings which is was a single wasn't very successful but it's 
a John Deacon song and it's really really good um, one of the high points of the album and you got Fight From The Inside um, kind of funk rock from Taylor um, it's okay it's you know it's it's a bit when you listen to it it feels good but it's a bit unforgettable as a Queen song overall then you've got Mercury's Get Down Make Love which is a great song uh, it's got kind of broken pieces uh, it's, it's it's quite ahead of its time in a way you know it's almost kind of uh, you'd have to hear it it's it's hard to describe but it's um good and heavy it's got great clear production on it sleeping on the sidewalk is kind of a boogie woogie uh, again probably one of the weaker songs uh brian may song yeah um but record business um who needs you is a kind of a I say it's kind of a acoustic uh spanish guitar tinged track which is um very nice indeed and there's some nice guitar orchestrations on it yeah it's it's carefully crafted it sounds simple but it's probably a lot going on in there it's late is one of the heavy belters on the album and uh a fine track and uh Again, one of the highlights, and the album tails off with My Melancholy Blues, which is actually Freddie on piano, uh, John on bass, and Roger on drums, and Brian actually doesn't appear on the track. It's a trio, kind of a jazzy piece, and it's actually very nice. Nice way to end the album. Uh, great vocal on it, very melodic. Superb. So by now it's 1978, and um, punk has been raging, and New Wave is starting to come along as well and um, Queen release jazz um, this one um, it's it's always been kind of one that stuck out for me as being how do I explain it um, there is some hits on there you know um, like Bat Bottom Girls um, and Don't Stop Me Now um, Bicycle Race again is on that and that is one of the most complicated seven inch singles of all time with all the time signatures changes and quirky little runs and fills um, but there's some good stuff on this um, Mustafa which is kind of Middle Eastern fun that's a fantastic track and it must have been insane at the time uh, Jealousy is a again great piano ballad by Mercury and um, one of the highlights on the album there's a couple of rockers there if you can't beat them, let me detain you. Yeah, that was used at live gigs a lot during the time. Um, it's kind of a run through. They name out all the things that they do, and there's a lot of name dropping in it. Um, Dead on time. Again, uh, I always felt that was kind of filler, along with um, Funnet, which is kind of white funk. And then you got to leave No Made Easy, which is um, a really, really kind of almost country kind of ballad. It's like the Eagles again. And... Uh, yeah, so it's a mixed bag, there's a lot of different things on it, and, um, you know, at the end of the day, it's still rewarding, but it's kind of, loses pace a little bit, it's a bit, I don't know, can't explain it, like, but, you know, it's, it's a good album, but it's, it, it, it kind of got me angers a little bit, that's, that's how I feel about it. Uh, but the 70s over, and, um, punk no longer a threat, um, but in the midst of, Disco and New Wave and Electronica music, which was going to be filling the charts pretty soon. Uh, Queen released the game. Um, this is a kind of stripped down affair, partly recorded between 1979 and 1980. Um, it was a very popular album at the time uh, due to the fact that it had some big singles, um, another one by the Dust kind of a black funk um, boogie um, play the game typical uh, Mercury piano ballad with fantastic vocals you, you can kind of feel the band are refreshed on this album uh, Dragon Attack is another um, funky bass number uh, Need Your Loving Tonight is you know standard almost kind of status quo and then we got the 1950s um, 
influence Crazy Little Thing Called Love. And um, I've heard that, um, you know, I, I guess Elvis was gone and um, Mercury was a big Elvis fan. There was a bit of a gap there. Um, but I've heard that um, John Lennon heard Crazy Little Thing Called Love and it gave him uh, a kick in the butt to go um, recording again. Uh, Rocket, um, Prime Jive. Is um, a big Queen rocker, but uh, again more modern. You know, it's a bit got synthesizers and stuff on top of it and everything. And the the band for years vowed never to use synth. Uh, and then we got another kind of a almost kind of a West Side Story job, and it's uh, Don't Try Suicide. Um, finger clicking. And uh, funny enough, there's kind of um, Andy Summer style chorus on a clean guitar yeah it's, so you know the police were an influence here slightly you know don't try suicide uh it's i think it's a great track you know it's a little bit throw away by queen standards but it's one of the highlights of the album for me and there's some great piano on it sail away sweet sister uh this is kind of harks back to early queen um coming soon uh that would probably be the weakest track and then we got mercury's uh poignant save me which is a beautiful piano ballad yeah, so yeah, the game is quite um, jaunty and uh, sprightly, and it's uh, a new queen really. Uh, Mercury um, cut his hair, and uh, they're all here in leather jackets, acting pretty tough. Next is Bash Gordon. Um, this is the original soundtrack music. Um, it's a short album, the shortest album in the Queen canon. Um, the movie was a, a big hit. And um, soundtrack, it's not essential. There's a lot of dialogue from the movie in it. There's more synthesizers than craft work. <laughs> um, you know, there's a lot of tracks on here as well. 18, the hero, is the only kind of um, heavy metal kind of style rocker. And Flash itself is a madcap 7 inch single. And uh rest of it is generally experimental and stuff like that and uh, like I said it's when you listen to maybe once a year or what it's novelty value um, you know would it be nice to hear some more oddities from the sessions uh, ones did come out all right but they were kind of uh, you know kind of work in progress but it would be nice to have a box not a box set but maybe a double CD with all the all the outtakes and uh, just the music played by Queen as a band rather than the clickety clackety scenty stuff that you get on the album but um it's fun and it's got a fantastic cover beautiful yellow and red hot space this is probably the most controversial queen album of all time um they were accused of going into disco territory um they don't really go into disco territory as such um you know there's nothing like the Bee Gees there um but they do Enter the nightclub. There's no doubt about that. Um, cover is a T-Rex album that looks like this, and I think it's also based on um, the game Simon. I think different colors. Um, it's a great album cover, and uh, I love the kind of images that you get. Um, uh, I I think it's very entertaining. It's one of my favorite Queen albums. Um, Staying Power is tight and powerful. It's got horns on it. Um, Dancer. Um, it's a bit nonsensical, but again, all the Mercury vocals on this album are some of the best vocals he's ever recorded. Um, back Chat, again it's a bit like Chic maybe, um, it's a good song, fits into the album well. Body Language is kind of almost synth bass, wambling along like a snake. Um, one of my favourites, it's a great track. It's got this kind of rolling 6-8 rhythm. Um, Action This Day. Uh, I think they were words by Winston Churchill. Um, it's a Roger Taylor song. Kind of a rock stomper. Um, it's kind of a big fanfare of synthesizers on this one. and a, It sounds almost like a kind of a digital saxophone or an electronic saxophone. Um, but it's it's good. You know, it's entertaining. It never lets down. Um, a lot of people slated this album. They said, oh God, you know, the, uh, <laughs> it's a great album. Put Out the Fire. It's a May Rocker. 
um, about gun laws. And then we have Life is Real, which is a um, song for Lennon, uh, written by Mercury. And it has the kind of John Lennon plotty piano rolling along and um, one of the highlights of the album. And uh, Calling All Girls is a great track. It's almost a little bit like crazy thing, crazy little thing called Love. And um, I think it's a great track, a bit underrated. Some lovely acoustic guitars blazing away. And then we have the beautiful Las Palabras de Amor, which was a single, didn't fare too well. Um, it's um, in Portuguese, the chorus, and um, it's a beautiful ballad, really nice song. Brian May wrote that. Um, cool Cat, okay, uh, it's Cool Cat, it's kind of, um, I'm amazed that somebody like, you know, Snoop Dogg didn't sample it, but it's kind of downbeat. Funk and Freddie Mercury is singing like Diana Ross or Smokey Robinson on this one in falsetto. It's it's novelty value. It's 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 actually so unqueen like that only they could do this, and that's why it's kind of just what the novelty is on it. Yeah, it's 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 not a bad song by any means. Um, it, it, it's a bit like Imagination, that band that came out at the time. You know, it, it tries to be kind of seductive and. It's a bit tongue in cheek too, you know. But it, it's hard to imagine a song like that um, on a Queen album, you know. This is 1982, <laughs> um, you know, in 1972 or 73 when they released a decade before they released their first album. You would have never, ever, ever thought that Cool Cat would be on a Queen album, but it is, and it's funny. Um, then we have Under Pressure, which was recorded with David Bowie, and that is an absolute masterpiece. It's just. A great song, great idea, and yeah. So that's Hot Space, um, one of the most hated Queen albums, and one of the most uh, dissed, but it's still a good album. Um, I read um, a, a comment on, on YouTube, somebody said that it was better than all Coldplay's uh, catalogue put together, and at the risk of being attacked i would say yes i'd rather listen to this than any coldplay music <laughs> okay stab over 1984 sees queen release the works um this is um a rethink they took um a year off after um hot space and um anyway they came up with the works which is a fine album. It's one of the finest if um, released in the 80s. Um, it's got the marvellous Radio Gaga on there. Um, it's a Hard Life. Um, I Want to Break Free. Hammer to Fall. They were the four big singles from the album. Um, there's other good songs on here too. Um, with, uh, Machines are Back to Humans. That's one of the highlights. Great guitar. The Queen have really you know, stripped themselves back. They're um, on flying form. The, the break did them good. Um, it's the world we created. It was kind of recorded as an afterthought. And it's a gentle little ballad. Harking back to love of my life. And things like that. Um, Keep passing the open windows. Uh, that's a superb song. Um, I think it was influenced by Stepping Out by Joe Jackson. It's, it's got that kind of um, very fast uh, throbbing bass line going through it. Um, and then there's other things like um, Tear It Up, which is kind of a big basher. And um, Man on the Pearl, which is pure rock and roll. And um, you could even imagine them recording an album of rock and roll songs. And it would, probably would have been, you know, Neil Young did one in the uh, 80s. Um, and other bands did. I think Billy Joel did one or something. But yeah, it's quite interesting. You know, they, it's a pity that they didn't come out with a 10 track cover album of other people's stuff it would be very very interesting yeah so that's the works um gels together pretty well it's actually quite a short album it's well under 40 minutes and uh yeah it's a good one it's entertaining and i always like to listen to it from start to finish next up we have a kind of magic um this was recorded after uh queen's stellar performance in live aid they kind of got a shot in the arm um, and they went back into uh, the studio 
and came up with uh, kind of magic. It's not really a soundtrack as such um, because there's no, um, you know, orchestrations on it and there's no um, dialogue from the movie, you know, only little snippets and samples. So it's a nine track album. Uh, One Vision, the kind of magic, um, Pain is so close to pleasure, Friends will be friends, kind of harks back to old Queen. Um, and it says the Majestic, uh, who wants to live forever on there as well. Um, Give Me the Prize is one of the heaviest tracks on the album. And at this stage, um, Queen were quite poppy, and I don't think the others liked that song. Um, because Mercury really screams his head off on it. And uh, But May almost sounds like Jimi Hendrix on that. It does a lot of good guitar on that from the mid-80s. Um, don't Lose Your Head. It's kind of mechanical. Um, click clack and then you've got Princes of the Universe which is a superb Queen song and you kind of wonder sometimes you know if they kept on the rock route um, would it be better you know um, you know like a lot of the Senti stuff is okay too like but um, you know you kind of think what if they came stay to the rock route you know if, if kind of magic was a little bit more like the works what would have what would it have been like you know the, we could be thinking on and on and on after the um, big European tour in 1986, um, there was really little heard of Queen in um, 87 and 88 when well, Mercury was doing some solo stuff. And um, then in May 1989, they came back with the miracle. Um, this is a different period for Queen. Um, the live concerts were over, sadly. Um, Mercury was. Um, starting to get ill at this stage um, and it's it's a kind of a sad period really um, because the album was going to be released and there was going to be no tour um, a lot of people didn't really know at the time some people were guessing and stuff like but um, these are troubled times for the band and um, I always felt that the miracle was it was kind of one dimensional because there was never any live um support for it you know i think i think that the live definitely makes or breaks an album and um, when you hear the tracks live it kind of makes you like the album more it makes you like the live versions there's there's kind of a a polarity between the the two uh but this was you know, there's some good songwriting on here and there's some good tracks but like i said the production is it's a bit uh synthetic in parts um party and Khashoggi's ship were all measuring in, chopping into each other pretty quickly. It, was, it wasn't a great start for an album. Um, and drum machines and stuff blazing and, 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 and you know, studio trickery, guitars panning left and right. And um, yeah, they're not, it's, they're not a great opener for a comeback album. It was their first album in three years. Um, so you know you kind of forgive them a bit for that but there's other sessions from the miracle that had better songs um but i think party and Khashoggi ship kind of they're kind of almost hodgepodge thrown in there We're kind of a poor opener uh the miracle itself is um pretty good um it's a complex uh track um with some time change signature changes on it it's quite interesting and it's got nice melodies i want it all as Queen returning to their um, rock driven um, arena style songs that they were great at. The Invisible Man, um, it's kind of dated, it's a bit kind of techno y and stuff like that. I know house music was big at the time. Uh, Breakthrough, um, yeah, I like that one, it's a good one. Um, very fast track as well. Rain Must Fall, again, we're kind of going into kind of almost like Motown kind of meanders a bit um, but there, you know it's, it, 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 it breaks up the album a little bit it kind of throws in a different light to it um, Scandal um, that's a kind of an underrated Queen track actually um, about newspaper and paparazzi and all that kind of stuff that were plaguing the band especially when Mercury got ill um, the scumbag paparazzis were outside the house taking photographs 24-7 uh, invading the privacy, um, you know, trying to turn him into some type of, you know, villain. And then after he died, it was almost like, oh yeah, he's a hero. Yeah, <laughs> I can't understand this way of thinking. Um, 
my baby does me. Uh, it's a bit like cool cat, I suppose. Um, kind of going through the motions. It, uh, it's it's a it's a bit of filler, I guess. Yeah, it's not the best screen track by any means. And then was it all worth it? Um, is it kind of a look back over the uh, years, and it's kind of autobiographical, and um, it's a great finisher and a very very good song. And it would have made a good single as well. It's a great track. So that's the miracle. Um, I think the band didn't even realise that they were, they, they, you know, they were kind of afraid that this might be the last one. Um, thankfully, it wasn't. But unfortunately, Innuendo um, was the swan song. And it's a far stronger album than the miracle. And the um, songwriting is strong here. Um, We've got the number one single, In Your Window Itself, um, which is a masterpiece. And the middle section has got Steve Howe from Yes on guitar. And Gone Slightly Mad is an old cover territory. And um, that's one of the highlights for me. Um, Headlong, another push ahead rocker. And then we've got I Can't Live With You, it's kind of more poppy. Uh, Don't Try So Hard is again one of the highlights for me. Um, Ride the Wild Wind, that is a fantastic song, um, really really good, um, one of my favourites. All God's People, I think that um, shares some um, roots with um, the Barcelona project that Mark Curry did with Mike Moran. Um, kind of gospel and classical and all moved in together. I never really liked it when the album came out, but I, I I appreciated it after, and I think it's one of the. It's not really. It would be great in a musical. That's what it sounds like to me. You know, it's pure Rodgers and Hammerstein. Um, These are the days of our lives. It's a poignant um, ballad of somebody looking back over their lives. Um, it's a it's a Taylor song actually. It wasn't written by Mercury. And uh, Delilah, it was written for Freddie's Cats, and. <laughs> A novel and then you've got the hitman for me hitman is just over the top um it's a bit you can tell it was very made trying to get his spoke in with the uh very very heavy guitars and stuff like that and it is heavy but it goes on a little bit too long and we've got the uh, bijou which is kind of a kind of a farewell um gentle little song and then we've got the majestic the show must go on and sadly the show was over for Freddie and that is the end of Queen in the studio as we know it. But then in 1995 this one was released, um, Made in Heaven. Um, it's an eerie album. Um, you know, it's one I'd really not listen to that much at all. It's a bit empty. Um, it's got stuff on it that's kind of outtakes and very, very last stuff by Mercury. I think Mother Love was one of the very last things he sang. Um, Let Me Live, it's it's kind of, oh, everybody gets a chance to sing on that song, which is its weakness. Yeah, My Life Has Been Saved was kind of rehashed B-side, which I never really liked. Um, Made in Heaven, I Was Born to Love You, are two Mercury um, songs from his Mr. Bad Guy album from 1985 and um, they were being re redone and um, still uh, it doesn't seem to save them um, I think the originals are better Heaven for Everyone is a, again an old cross song by Roger Taylor and Too Much Love Will Kill You is kind of a poignant ballad it's not bad You Don't Fool Me is kind of one of the most original things on here um yeah and winter's tale that's another nice little ballad and uh that's it really um it's to me it's kind of hollow it's kind of an act of smoke and mirrors it's what was left of queen and i guess that the other three surviving members felt fit to put it together and um you know say goodbye to their friend and that's it so yeah that's queen studio collection and i hope you enjoy this video uh, please leave some comments or subscribe. Take care.